It's been a while since I've shot some video, although that may not seem that way to you because for the first year and a half or so of this build, I've been taking videos, but not exactly uploading them or doing anything with them. Um, so this past week, I actually went through, edited about a year or so worth of videos and threw it all on YouTube. So if you're watching it, that's why the upload dates are so much different from the dates I have in the description uh, or the title that tell you when I actually worked on the various parts of the airplane. Anyway, so I finished the rudder uh, and the end of the last video was I think in June of 2022. It's now January of uh, 2023. So it's been a good six months since I've really filmed much of anything. Uh, so during that time, I received my wing kit. You can actually see behind me here, I have a large part of the left wing completed. Um, but most of what I've been doing over the last six months has just been processing parts. So I basically went through deburred, primed, cut and otherwise assembled most of the parts um, for, uh, or excuse me, not assembled, but processed most of the parts for both wings. I then went and uh, built the uh, left wing, largely. Um, sometimes it's a pain in the butt to video, uh, take videos of things when you're trying to figure out what to do. And so what I figured I'd do is build the left wing and then take lots of videos of me building the right wing. So that's where this video is gonna start. I'm gonna kind of talk you through some of the highlights of what's involved in building the wings. Uh, first off, when you get the wings, they have these wing spars, they're gold, and these are the main load-bearing structures, substructures of the airplane. So these things are pretty heavy duty, um, pretty robust, pretty expensive, so you don't wanna screw them up. And the first thing that the wing kit uh, instructions have you do is basically drill holes, um, enlarge holes, machine countersink holes and do a whole bunch of work on the spar that can actually screw it up. So you gotta be careful with what you're doing. So you can't really see it in this video right here, but along the top of these spars, there's lots of holes. I haven't counted, but hundreds of holes that you're ultimately gonna uh, rivet uh, skins and um, uh, ribs to. So the first thing you do is go through, most of them are uh, 3 32nd uh, of an inch. Um, you go through and you ream all of them. Um, they're not all final size, uh, if I remember correctly, maybe they are. Anyway, I reamed all of them with the reamer. The nice thing about using a reamer, unlike a drill bit, is it leaves less um, to, uh, it doesn't create quite as much of a burr, if any burr at all. Uh, so I basically went through the whole, uh, each side of the spar, so for a total of four, um, and uh, reamed all the holes. Uh, and then I kind of deburred the back of them. Then what you have to do is you go across and you countersink all of the holes or a lot of the holes. Um, for uh, holes that are gonna accept rivets, you kind of countersink them so they are flush uh, with a 3 seconds rivet. Um, for holes that are gonna accept a dimpled skin, you basically countersink them about seven thousandths of an inch uh, uh, more shallow, um, so or, or deeper rather. Uh, you also have to countersink a couple of holes, a bunch of holes that are ultimately gonna be uh, accepting nut plates. And basically, that's where you're going to put screws in when you put on the fuel tanks. So these holes, you make them a little bit bigger and you countersink them a little bit deeper. Um, after you're done countersinking all of those holes, uh, then basically you have some bare aluminum. You don't want that to uh, uh, corrode. And so you could put some primer uh, on those, but what I did is I went the expensive route. I basically bought this Aladine pen for 150 bucks. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And basically the Aladine pen allows you to put some corrosion protection on it in a way that doesn't change the final dimensions. Not important in this application. Putting some primer on there would have been just fine, but I kind of looked at it and thought, I like the idea of buying this Aladine pen. So I bought an Aladine pen and um, basically, and all the bare, uh, holes uh, for the holes that I countersunk, I basically rubbed that alodide and pen in there to uh, impart some corrosion protection. So anyway, doing each, each spar has two sides, top and the bottom, and you have to do all these steps on uh, both sides. In total, it took me at least about two and a half hours or so per side. Um, I was probably doing about two hours by the end, maybe three hours, three hours, 15 minutes at the beginning. It took some, uh, I may have not known how to countersink quickly and consistently before doing this, but I certainly can countersink consistently and quickly now um, because it gave me a lot of practice. Anyway, so that's kind of the first step 
uh, when it comes to doing the wings is basically going through and doing all these things here. So the next part of this video, I'm basically gonna go through and put on the main spars, uh, rear, uh, uh, excuse me, ribs on along the spar. So that's the next step. So I've laid out all the ribs that I'm going to be riveting uh, to the spar. Um, basically, this is gonna consist of me largely putting a rivet on the uh, back here of the spar and then riveting with 1 8 rivets right along here. That's pretty much it. Um, I also do need to put some, on most of the uh, ribs, some AN3 bolts in the very top and the very bottom. And uh, this has given me a little bit of consternation. Putting bolts on, uh, of course, isn't that difficult. The issue that I have is you're supposed to torque them correctly. Uh, in this case, to 25 inch pounds, or if I'm using the nylon washers, um, probably about 32 inch pounds or so. Um, no big deal. I've used torque wrenches before. I have a couple torque wrenches. I have a torque wrench that I bought just for this application. The issue that I have, the thing that gives me a little bit of heartburn is when I torque them to about 32 inch pounds, it seems like I'm barely torquing them at all. Um, and I'm worried about them coming loose in flight. So it's taken me a long time to convince myself by reading posts on Vans Air Force and things like that, that this is in fact the correct torque value. Uh, so, I'm, well, I should say I'm about 80% convinced. Anyway, I'm gonna get to it uh, basically to start putting these suckers on and I'm gonna do the usual thing. I'll put it on high speed on the video so you can kind of see me doing this. Um, after I put all these ribs on right here, then I need to put on the rear spar and stuff like that but I'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna start now putting on all these ribs, riveting them and bolting them to the uh, right wing spar. finished putting on all the ribs, uh, connecting them to the uh, main spar for the uh, right wing. Um, by and large, it went really smoothly. Everything went okay until I got to the very end when I had to drill out a rivet. And I ended up not having to drill it out once, but like four or five times. And so I, I lost track. I've never had to drill out a rivet that much before. Uh, anyway, the hole got a little bit bigger than maybe it should have. And so uh, it wasn't gonna fit a 1 8 rivet. Um, <laughs> So my first thought was maybe I should buy a whole new wing and rebuild it. Um, after about two seconds, I rejected that idea and decided that I was gonna drill out that hole with the number 12 drill bit. And instead of putting a 1 8 rivet, I put an AN3-5A bolt through it, kind of like what's on the top of the bottom of the ribs um, and use that and it fit beautifully. Um, pretty sure that'll work. It's stronger than a 1 8 rivet, so it'll work. Um, anyway, other than that, it worked, turned out really good. So next step in building the wing is there's a rear spar that I'm gonna to put together. So the rear spar is gonna have a couple doublers that you uh, have to attach onto it. I'm gonna do it separately. Uh, and then click it onto here and uh, rivet it to the back. So next step, 
putting the rear spar together and attaching it to the uh, back of these ribs. All right, so I just laid out everything to uh, start riveting some of the parts together for the rear spar on the right wing. Um, this is the rear spar right here, this big sucker right here. Um, I've got to basically rivet on like doubling plates like this. Um, this is where some, I think, like flap brackets are gonna go or something like that. Uh, uh, or reinforcing for the flaps, also for the ailerons. I have this doubler, which is near the wing root, um, which just strengthens things a bit. Um, and then the other parts I got to rivet on this thing include the aileron hinge brackets right here. So I put these together a little while ago. And one of the things I noticed on Vans Air Force is a lot of people had clearance issues with some of the universal head rivets. So I put in more flush rivets than what the plans called for. Um, uh, and I also, especially on the side where the aileron kind of bumps up against the flap, um, I think there's some people that talked about having some clearance issues there. And normally you just kind of have to shave away some of the material on either the ailerons or, and or the flaps. So to hopefully forestall that, I um, flush riveted uh, both sides uh, mostly on the uh, hinge bracket. Um, not all the rivets, but a lot of them I did. So hopefully that should make it so there's gonna be no clearance issues. Not that that would be an insurmountable problem. Um, but I thought it was a good idea, so I went ahead and did that. Anyway, I'm gonna get started on doing this. Um, do the usual thing. I'll show some time-lapse video of me working on this. But basically, I'm gonna, today, I'm gonna to rivet these parts on the rear uh, spar, put the rear spar on the, uh, attach them to the, the wing ribs, um, and then keep on working. So, uh, that's the plan. assembling the rear spar for the right wing and I uh, attached it and by and large it went pretty smoothly. Um, I'm definitely getting better at riveting and uh, which I guess isn't surprising and it went a lot quicker than the, uh, the work I did in the left wing. Um, with three exceptions, I had to drill out three rivets. Um, two of them weren't so bad, I just kind of got lazy with the universal head set on the rivet gun and you kind of have to be careful with that because if you're not it'll kind of smear the uh, manufactured head a little bit and you got to drill it out. Uh, for two of them, no problem, drilled it out uh, uh, and was able to replace them. But there was one rivet right here that's in a really thick part of the metal and it, I couldn't have made a worse mistake. Um, and I drilled it out and it was still thin spec, but it was, the hole got enlarged a little bit and it's kind of ugly. Um, I was able to put in another rivet, set it just fine, but it just drives me nuts. I mean, it's really aggravating. Uh, there's, I think, 18,000 rivets, I don't know, something like that on this airplane. They can't all be perfect, but I still have in my head this delusion, I guess, that every rivet I set is going to be perfect. And this one is probably going to be driving me crazy, like, forever. Uh, anyway, I got it set successfully. Um, the, uh, the hole is enlarged still within spec, and 
you know, it's within spec now, but that was not a fun one to drill out. It's kind of in an awkward place, and I had to use like a 90 degree angle drill to get it out and stuff. Not as fun. Anyway, other than that, it went smoothly. So now my next step is to get this wing and kind of rotate it 90 degrees onto my table here, um, and then I'll kind of clamp it down. And then I start putting on the top skins. Uh, once the top skins are on, of course, I rivet those things on. So that's the next step in this process and I'm gonna get after it. So I just finished uh, cleat going on all the uh, top skins for the right wing. Now I've just got to rivet it together. Uh, some of it I can do on, on my own, but most of it I can't. So I'm gonna have to get people to help me. Um, long story short, I'm probably gonna have to spread this out over quite a few days, depending on who's available, who can help me and all that. Anyway, that's what's coming up next. right about to grab my wife and start riveting the top skins on my right wing when I thought to myself, you know, she really hates doing this, so what can I do to make this go faster? What I decided to do was just between all the rivets that I've already set on the top skin, didn't film that, um, I just put all the rivets in and put rivet tape on it. Uh, that way I will improve my chances of staying married by making this whole thing go faster for my wife. Uh, if you're building an airplane, you're welcome for this idea. I'm positive I'm the first person who ever came up with it. Anyway, I'm gonna go grab my wife and we're gonna rivet the top skins on and then that'll be it for this video. Uh, there's still more I need to do on the wings, but I'm gonna do most of that later. Um, like put on the bottom skins and stuff like that. There's stuff you gotta do inside the wings, so I gotta keep them open for now. Anyway, I'm gonna go grab my wife and we're gonna rivet this thing together. I'm almost done with this part of the wings, or uh, as much as I'm gonna do on the right wing for now, but I created a little problem for myself, and now it's the time where I've gotta fix it. Specifically, when I had this wing Clico together, one of the things that I had to do was drill a whole bunch of holes along this side of the wing um, for number eight screws. Uh, and I got a little silly with the drill, and I created a problem for myself. Specifically, the problem is right here. This screw is uh, screwed into a nut plate, and most nut plates have a rivet hole on either side of the screw hole. So I drilled, not paying attention, I drilled this hole uh, for a number eight screw, thinking that the two rivets were on either side. Obviously I was wrong. And this particular nut plate, the only one along here, has rivets on, uh, in this case, the upper side. So basically I put the rivet there, I have that screw in there to hold the nut plate in place, but this hole obviously is too big for either a uh, 3 32nd rivet or a 1 8 rivet. So that's my problem. So my brilliant solution to this problem that I'm sure no one has ever thought of before 
uh, is going to be to uh, use some epoxy with some flux and basically fill this hole in right here, um, then drill it out for uh, with a number 30 drill, or excuse me, a 40 drill for a 332nd rivet, uh, machine countersink it, and then put the rivet in. Now, if this were a structural part right here, um, if that rivet played a structural role, which I don't think it does, um, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd rather I'd drill a hole on either side and put new rivets in. But this particular rivet hole, all it's supposed to do is hold the nut plate together, or excuse me, hold the nut plate uh, against the skin so when you screw something in it, uh, put a screw in it, it doesn't rotate. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix up some of this epoxy that I have. I use West System Epoxy. Uh, mix it with some of this flux right here um, and just basically fill up that hole, wait for it to dry, drill it out, machine countersink it, and then put in the rivet. And then I think that makes it, or it means I'll be done with this part of the wing for now. Again, I'm using this West System Epoxy. Um, you're supposed to mix five parts up of this stuff here, either by weight or volume, with one part of this stuff right here um, to get it to cure correctly. I bought these high-precision squirters that will get the ratio right for you. So I'm just gonna put one squirt of the 105 into this little cup. Put uh, one squirt of that right there, sort of mix it up. And this is overkill. This is gonna be way more epoxy than I need but whatever. Um, and then, sorry, I had to grab, grab a paper towel. Uh, and then I'm gonna mix this flux in there. So this is basically, as far as I can tell, just chunks of cotton, um, and it kind of adds some body to it. I'm not sure if it contributes to the structural strength of this stuff, and wow, this cup might be a little too small. Um, but you're basically supposed to mix it up so it has the consistency of peanut butter. Even if it doesn't add to the strength, it definitely plays one role because I've used this stuff before. Um, and that is it'll hold the epoxy in place while it's drying. It won't run because once you mix this stuff, it can get pretty dang thick. So, okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. All right, it's holding its shape. So that's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna kind of put it in the hole. Just gonna kind of shove it in there until it comes starts coming out the other side. And it is. I'm just gonna kind of squeegee it off with the toothpick, or excuse me, with the whatever the popsicle stick, I guess this is. Okay. And there you go. Okay, I'm done with the right wing and also the left wing, for now anyway. Uh, there's quite a few things I still need to do with it. I need to put the ailerons on, I need to put the flaps on, I need to put the aileron, aileron actuator rods and hinges and all that through the whole thing. Um, I need to put the front leading edge on and I need to make the fuel tanks and put those on too. Then I need to rivet the bottom skin. Actually, before I rivet the bottom skin on, I need to run a whole bunch of wires through it. I need to put the pitot static tube on it. I need to put the wing tips on it. So now that I'm listing these things, I'm realizing I'm not actually done with the right wing at all, but I am done with it for now. So got the top skins on. Next step is to do the uh, uh, flaps and ailerons, um, probably do the aileron actuation stuff, then move on to the uh, leading edge as well as the fuel tanks. Regardless, that's it for now. That's it for this video.